All right, folks, if you don't skip over these ads, which I hope you don't, because they are being paid for by people who are part of the unspoiled community, so they're more meaningful than some of the other ads that are automatically put onto my feed. These, these like reminders that the tax season for next year is coming up have been more and more insistent. But now, for reals, we're halfway through November. It's time. If you intend to face 2023 without panicking or late nights or just a general sense of anxiety hanging over your head, now is the time to go talk to Molly Morris. Please listen to me on this, guys. It's m3virtualaccounting.com. She will do a free consultation with you to find out what it is you need, whether she's a good fit for you, and she is flexible in the way that she charges based on what you're looking for and what you're doing. She is wonderful. So please, 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 if you have been sort of putting it off all year, but every time you hear me talk about it, you're like, oh yeah, I have to remember to do that. No, now you just have to do it. m 3 Accounting. Dot com. This is an Unspoiled Network podcast. This is Unspoiled, covering Ted Lasso, Season 2, Episode 5, Rainbow. In this episode, Nate has to learn how to stand up for himself, and I, he, he gets there by spitting at himself in the face, which I'm not totally getting. But you know what? I feel like he's still coming out ahead of me, so I don't have room to talk. <laughs> Welcome to Unspoiled. Welcome to the show, everyone. I am Natasha. I'm Rashawn. All right. So this episode, this, this was episode. a weird one for me. Yeah. Tell us why. It just felt so like, I felt sad through a lot of it. You know, there mm -hmm. were a, like, what Nate's going through here is so hard to watch because even if I have trouble standing up for myself in situations, especially dealing with service people. I at least am not quite as awkward as he is, you know? And so watching him try to navigate the combination of being a little bit socially inept and not being able to stand up for himself mm -hmm. is so much more painful than I was really wanting to see, mm. really, is what it comes down to. I didn't want to see it. Makes me uncomfortable. Makes me sad for him. Mm -hmm. This, um, <laughs> I say this, uh, dedicated listeners will have probably noticed that almost every episode I say, this is one of my favorites, <laughs> or this has one of my favorite jokes, or this has one of my favorite lines. <laughs> um, my regret every time I watch this episode, and we talked about this a little bit with the Carol of the Bells episode, is I'm not a big rom com watcher hmm. i uh, i've seen like a lot of the like really like top tier classics not mm -hmm. even a lot though because there's a lot i haven't seen i've seen some of the top tier classics but they're all pretty old you know like yeah. when harry met sally is like fucking 35 years old now or something at this point you know what i mean mm -hmm. uh a lot of the other more current ones I don't, I haven't seen. And I feel like every time I watch this episode, there's a million jokes and references that just go over my head because I don't get them. Yeah. But I do love this episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I really like the focus on uh, Nate in this episode because mm -hmm. I think that we have gotten little glimpses into the complicated world of Nate, you know, like little one-liners and little things he said about himself over the course of the first season. Mm -hmm. um, but here we're starting to really get an idea of who he is. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. um, and I really, really like that. Uh, and I agree with you. It is difficult <sighs> to watch him struggle. 
Um, and it, it lends itself to all kinds of questions about where the, the show is going, you mm-hmm. know, and, uh, and, and how, what he's going to do, you know, kind of person he's going to be. Yeah. Yeah. I am. Um, well, all right. Let's just, mm-hmm. I, I keep wanting to like jump ahead and talk about a thing and let's just talk about the thing, shall we? Uh, he, we start off in a restaurant, a Greek restaurant called Taste of Athens. In Tooting. <laughs> in Tooting. <laughs> and uh, he is trying to get a table for his parents' wedding anniversary. A table for three, which honestly I found real weird. Like, Why? I would not go to my parents' anniversary dinner. That feels like a couple's thing. You wouldn't take your parents out to celebrate their anniversary? No, it would never even occur to me to be involved. That's like them. That's Mm. their thing. It's between Mm -hmm. them. I wasn't even around Mm -hmm. yet. It hasn't really got anything to do with me in the end. I know a lot of people, a lot of children do that, like celebrate their parents' anniversary. I agree with you. Well, actually, I'm I'm 50-50. Like, I get the impulse to celebrate your parents' anniversary because you want to, like, do a thing for them because Mm -hmm. hooray, right? Mm -hmm. But because I'm not a parent, I think of anniversaries as being between the couple. Yeah. But it is, like, a very, like, yeah. Yeah, let's take mom and dad out for their anniversary. Let's throw a big party or whatever. Yeah, it's one thing (laughs) if it's, like, a big number and you want to throw a party with people. Like, then it feels sort of like you're involving everyone in their lives because they have experienced these folks as a couple and you're celebrating that like the way you've lived together with this couple Mm -hmm. but when it's just you and your parents that feels real weird to me (laughs) and um there's a moment where he like says table for three and i like the window table and she gives him a weird look and i thought it was because of the table for three at first that she was kind of like (laughs) But it turns out that the t- the window table is like a special table that they only give to their the. This is an interesting thing that happens in real restaurants and also happens in like retail. They want attractive people in the window, and mm-hmm. if you don't meet a standard, they are not interested in showcasing that you are at their restaurant. Mm-hmm. And like there was a uh uh podcast i was listening to where somebody had worked at american apparel Hmm. and they had a weight limit for how heavy you could be and still work out front in the store if you were thicker you had to work in stock Um, is is that the one that had their documentary that came out Oh no, that's Abercrombie and Finch. I'm thinking about they had the documentary that just came out. Well, not just came out. It. It's like on Hulu or Netflix or something about just how toxic it was and and all of the stuff you're talking about, like although the fat phobia and like having the right look to work on a floor and all that shit is like mm-hmm. exposed. And they interview like people that work there and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's uh, it's really fascinating to think back to my experiences like shopping for clothes as a teen and how aware I was of the look of the people who worked there and how that contributed to me never entering the store, never even went into an Abercrombie and Fitch. It was not for me. And I knew it was not for me. And I was just not even going to try. It was so clear. Yeah. I didn't go, but it wasn't about the weight. It was about how white it was. Like I would walk by in the mall and just be like, like, holy fuck, they are not interested in me at all. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. It was very like, you need to have blonde, flat ironed hair and no ass. To fit in our clothing. And I was just like, well, never Guess mind. Not. <laughs> Did you ever work any kind of retail, clothing retail? Like not your- clothing, no. Okay. That's one area that I have no uh, real familiarity with at all. It's been like grocery stores and I worked at Star- Staples and then I did like restaurants and those are my... Oh, that's where my mom works. Stables? Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. We talked about that. Um, so yeah, she is so weird, this girl. She's this host really is rude. So She's so really odd. odd. She is a lot for someone who works at a little corner cafe mm-hmm. in tooting, right? <laughs> there is something I feel like that you must pick up in an interview to choose a hostess because so many hosts I've like met have this sort of they are the gatekeeper and they are fully aware of it and they wield the power mm-hmm. with knowledge mm-hmm. of, you know, and it's like a joke in a lot of stuff because it's true. Yeah. 
it's a person that otherwise does not get much power but they have like a social capital and they are going to use it if they are smart about it. Yeah. And I think about, I was a hostess for a while and I wish to God I had like made more of that because I didn't. <laughs> and uh, a part of me is like, I probably should have like, you know, accepted some bribes maybe right. just like sort of been like, I don't know, maybe I could get that table for you. It depends. My favorite trope about this position is when it's a hostess, it's always a young woman who's mm-hmm. very attractive. Mm-hmm. And when it's a man, it's a maitre d', and he's always very older, like much older and dignified, you know, and, and that's how he Sometimes keeps... has like a bit of flamboyance about him. Yep, and mm-hmm. may or may not have an, an accent. He might be French, he might be British, but something that, that elevates him to be in a position of deciding who can come and mm-hmm. who can't, right? Mm-hmm. And I always think it's really funny to see which capital, like how the capital for the woman is, what is her, you know, oh, it's being young and beautiful and what's the man's and it's, oh, it's being distinguished and knowledgeable. And it's like, "Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm, I I see y'all. Yep. (laughs) There's a really great bit in, did you ever see Date Night? with um i tina did Fey and actually Crow. and it was really fucking funny and i That's wanted a to funny sh- one i wanted to shit all over that movie and i laughed so goddamn hard. there's a point where they go to this restaurant and they're late and nick kroll is playing the nader d <laughs> and he is just the bitchiest cunt you have ever met and at one point they're like okay well we'll wait at the bar in case something opens up and he just goes okay bye i've already forgotten about you (laughs) (laughs) i forgot all about that uh so yeah he asks for the window seat she says i need to go talk to derek like he should know who derek is first of all Second of all, like he has made a request that is so outlandish that she isn't going to talk to Derek at all. In my opinion, (laughs) she says, I'm going to go talk to Derek. She goes back. Derek is on the phone. She just leans up against the wall for a second and checks her texts and then goes back out there. And it's like, yeah, we don't do that. (laughs) And the whole like way that he waits for her. And she comes back out and does not acknowledge him and goes straight back to her Mm -hmm. little stand without Mm -hmm. even making eye contact. This has happened to me where I am waiting for like a response and the person comes back and they behave as if they, I'm not waiting explicitly Mm -hmm. for them. And I never know how to handle that. It is the wildest thing to me. It feels like you're being gaslit. Like, Mm -hmm. are you, are you hoping that by pretending we didn't have a conversation that i will just leave (laughs) or do you want me to push you for like some other like what 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 do you want here what are you (laughs) getting out of it i don't think it's the first i think it's the i hope that i can make you feel so invisible and so uncomfortable and so small you will just slink away and i won't have to deal with you i think so yeah so in the while he's waiting for her, we see this bit with uh, Roy as he is <laughs> he is going back and forth with the former coach of <laughs> Richmond, who is talking about how watching these like inept players is like watching a woman behind the wheel. Oh my god! To which Roy says, "Didn't you just get a DUI for drink driving?" Which I find it really weird that they say <laughs> drink driving. <laughs> like drunk driving is you are drunk while driving but drink driving implies mm-hmm. that you had a drink in your hand and got caught with it <laughs> while you were driving you know like he had a whole martini shaker in his cup holder <laughs> um and when the dude says that it was an allergic reaction to his medication is that the same reaction that made you piss your pants <laughs> <laughs> i like to think that that wasn't common knowledge and that's just something roy knows because he had been like you know he's got the in on right, these people, right, right. and he just decided to fucking put that out on the air and just. I like, like that. <laughs> I uh, I I. Now that you mentioned it, I kind of hope that's what happened. <laughs> Though I don't know, man. The fucking UK tabloid situation is fucking so bonkers over there. True. I feel like I feel like if he pissed his pants, that shit made it to the paper. <laughs> They're selling the squares of the cloth his pants were made out of. Did you see that call it Elon Musk peed on crust? No, why? I don't know, just because it sounds close to his name or whatever. It but does I, not. I, I there, we could some... do so much better. Everybody, I, 
I don't know if there's more to it than that. I think I saw it. I saw it today for the first time on a fucking Ali Henry's pose. She called her peed on crust. And I was like, what is happening? The thing that kills me is Musk's already like kind of a gross last already name. Bad. They're also calling him Apartheid Clyde. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, wow, that just that laugh came from my fucking toes. Ooh, that is a good one. I just listened to the Scam Goddess episode about fucking Sean King. Oh she it's a two parter, everybody. And if you haven't listened to Scam Goddess, she is a delight and I definitely recommend it. Lacey, I can't remember her last name, but um she goes through the list of of nicknames that people have given him. So good. That is one of the all time list. <laughs> it's so good. Did you hear a good one that I hadn't heard before? Um, my favorite that I had not heard was just Scamuel L. Jackson, <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was pretty good. Oh my um, god! And then it was. Uh, Oh my god, there there was such a long list and it she is plays really long. she plays some song like We Shall Rise Above or something in the background while she's reading them out. <laughs> it is really something. Please uh, tell me as we shall overcome. It might have been. <laughs> I'm trying to remember, but I feel like it was. That's like the like the, bell. The civil rights sort of like anthem, you know, that they would sing and all the yeah. marches and stuff. Oh my god, that's amazing. That fucking <laughs> Halloween meme that was going around that had him on it is Octoroon Grifter. <laughs> and oh then in God. like small print, it was like melanin not included. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that you showed me that. Oh, that was the the look, just just real quick, guys. I cannot handle like I didn't know how bad it was. And there's a point in the beginning of the coverage where she's talking to this woman who had done a lot of research on him and put together like a slideshow basically of his scams and put mm. it out there for people. And this woman was saying, you know, I just saw a lot of people that I knew meant well sharing his stuff. And I realized, oh, they just don't have like enough black friends to tell them. And I was like, that's what happened to me. I didn't have enough black friends at the time and I was doing my best and I saw him sharing shit that was like this the the event was true. It had happened. And I was like, okay, I will share this guy. And you know what happened, Rashawn? I saw, and Ryan Reisman, if you're listening to this, inadvertently thank you. Ryan Reisman posted, Are people still sharing Sean King? Question mark. And Nina commented, people who want to feel woke. And I was like, oh. <laughs> Whoops. Uh oh. What's up? <laughs> and I looked into it and then found out. But I was in that exact place where I did uh... not know. And uh, okay, so I'm, I'm seeing some. Well, we've got Talcomax, mm-hmm. Thurgood Partial, mm-hmm. Pale Revere, <laughs> Alexander Scamilton. That's a good one. I, I enjoy that, even though Alexander Hamilton is not black, so that doesn't really like, make sense, really. Um, we have there's like a whole Twitter there's one with this page in it. Frederick Douglass, <laughs> <laughs> Stevie of Wonder. Oh my god, I don't feel like she read that one. That one is getting me a little bit. Uh, <laughs> Thurgood Marshmallow. <laughs> Whack Panther. Uh uh Harriet Topman. <laughs> Cream Abdul Jabbar. Crooker T. Washington. <laughs> Django Uncolored. Oh my god. Uh, Count Chalk Ewa. <laughs> Albino Sharpton, <laughs> Neil deGrasse, you white son. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to leave it there. Neil deGrasse, uh, you white son. That's a good closer. We're done. Oh, boy. Anyway. All right. <clears throat> so this uh, this scene basically ends with her being like, yeah, you're going to get the table we give you. And that's mm. what you're going to get. And he walks out and just pauses looking longingly at the window table before leaving. I love at one point he's like. Well, I know Roy can't. And she's like, is he your father? Will he be at dinner? 
Well, like, let Roy Kent know that anytime he would like to come, we would love to give him the window like, table, which is just so rude. He's trying to leverage, you know, mm-hmm. something to make this happen. And it just like, she's unimpressed. Not <laughs> so we get the credits and then we come back into a game and they lose. And then we have all of our bros in the locker room watching the plays. And yeah. Isaac is just yelling, we need to get it together in a very ineffectual, unfocused <laughs> way. And everybody I... is like taking responsibility for the fact that they like didn't play well, but there's no action plan here. It's just like, improve, yeah. just improve. Jan, Jan is like, you know what? That was my fault. That mm-hmm. was terrible. And then Isaac yells at him anyway. Yeah, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> and we have Dr. Sharon is uh, observing the team watching the film and making her notes. And mm-hmm. uh, what do you think of uh, it's weird because we get we haven't talked a lot with Dr. Sharon, Mm-mm. but she has been around in the background of each episode, you know, making her little notes and everything. Uh, what do you think of Ted while she's observing? Does it feel like to you that he feels, I don't know, weird or. If like the, this part where he, where she's in the room with them. I was like preparing for him to make more of a uh, he was going to make an attempt to be deeper Mm. than he is. And instead, he's just like, hey, rom-coms, things work out so they can work out for us, too. And I was like, really, Ted, this is what you're going with in front of the like psychologist. (laughs) That's the that's the play for me, I guess. Like, I was kind of surprised at how underachieving it felt like he was in the mm. scene because i thought he would go for something a little bit more profound mm. at least trying to be profound you know yeah um his uh his his message of kind of just being like uh what's gonna happen is gonna happen it'll mm-hmm. all work out it might not be what you want or what you hoped for but it will work out mm-hmm. uh so for you that felt kind of weak it we just saw felt like us- nothing it just is that there's no, that's not coaching. That's just keeping somebody from like quitting. Yeah, from spiraling out. <laughs> yeah, you know, just kind of keeping them like steady. And that may be important for Isaac because he certainly looks like he's on the edge of spiraling out. Mm-hmm. But as for everybody else, I didn't feel like it was really helpful or anything. I don't know. It just, it, it felt, and especially like, we spend so much time naming people who have acted in this romantic so, comedies. This is so, for me, so delightful only because it's something about just a room full of like dudes and jocks, mm-hmm. you know? Yep. <laughs> and at one point he has moved on Fucking Danny and Ross. Danny just yells out, <laughs> Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> that is a very good one. And not at all. It'd be too late. <laughs> Who was actually, Jennifer Lopez was a, a small feature on this Game Goddess episode. And I had no idea, y'all. But that bitch does not sing. Oh, no. Ashanti sang her shit. Ashanti or Christina Milian is another one. Or mm-hmm. there was, like, a couple other people who whose names I didn't recognize. I had no idea that she just, like, I only found out about it two years ago or so. And then mm. she went into depth a little bit more with it. And mm. basically they were like well you know there were days where she was really busy and Lacey's just like doing what and I was like that is the question right this is her career I thought but I guess that nobody told her she wasn't very good at singing so they just kind of let her think she was good at singing and then like (laughs) she didn't realize that what she was hearing on the produced track was not her which is what that part I didn't know that's what she claims that's really funny. And I can't tell if that's true that's or not. Amazing. That sounds so crazy that it feels like it might be true, you know? But You just think you're so good that when it comes out the speakers, you're like, damn, I sound great. You know? <laughs> like, maybe. I don't know. But <laughs> anyway, so yeah, anytime. It's such a shame, too, because I was like, she was uh, my first representation of a Latina woman in the mainstream who was celebrated for being a lot curvier than any of the other women who were in 
like oh. rom coms and stuff. So I had like a real feeling of being seen with her coming on the scene and then finding out that she was just basically a fucking fraud. I'm like very oh. sad by it. Oh. Um but she had to do that baby bangs thing where she had bangs that came down to <laughs> her goddamn eyebrows. What are you doing? <sighs> It's fine. <laughs> What's that fucking joke about this song? Like we all didn't know that she was spelling R U L E. Oh <laughs> my god! They thought it was Are You Ready? Everybody thought it was Are You Ready? Everybody thought that, except for Rashawn. I feel like Rashawn, you knew that she was spelling something. You had to like rub it in my face that you yeah. were aware, and I was like, Yeah, I was sounds aware. fake. I was sounds aware. Fake. I don't believe it. Oh yeah, I will never. <laughs> I just remember your head exploding when we talked about that the first time. <laughs> and now between her and fucking Jaw Rule with Firefest, oh wow, God, right? What a lineup in that. <laughs> Listen, yeah. Irv Gotti too. Woo! That whole Murder Inc. A mess. I wonder Messy. if she's done a Jaw Rule episode. I should Messy. write in and be like, "Hey, Lacey." <laughs> You want to do a Firefest episode? <laughs> um, anyway, okay. So, yeah, that's basically his entire message is that it will all work out. Our job is to have no expectations. And then she comes up to Ted after, well, afterward and is like, is Isaac okay? And he says, no, he's a wigwam in a teepee. <laughs> and she doesn't get it. And Beard has to chime because in she's with an two adult. <laughs> And I was so tired for her. <laughs> I just like, like, like as much as we, as much as I love everything about everything the show is doing, it has to be exhausting, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it has to be fucking exhausting. <laughs> this and later on when she just yells, "Coach." Floor, ceiling, garbage can. Now you go. Yeah. What What are you doing, Ted? He, what he are you doing? Is so uncomfortable by her presence. My he, door is always open. Then why have one? He like yells it at her. Yeah. It's Calm uh, the fuck down. It is like it's so weird because so much of his shtick is so charming, mm-hmm. you know, and disarming, and we all love it, and the jokes are funny and everything, but. When you see him in those moments where you're just like, what is happening, sir? Mm. <laughs> you know, like he just, he just goes like to, to, to 400, like just, just takes the Ted up, you know, uh, for no reason. I, it's Ex- like, I don't recognize him. Yeah. Like on the, if you were, if you were <laughs> like what his bits when she's around feel like somebody who watched this show who was just a nobody trying to write a fanfic of how he would be acting Mm. in a scene and they're getting it kind of wrong and making him Mm. like way too annoying Mm. it's like the the general vibe i get what you're going for but you are off Mm -hmm. and that's what it's like every time i'm just like who are you now what is this nobody likes this what do you think it is it just feels like he's trying to like just again it always feels to me like dominate the conversation he wants to control the conversation and and like decide what the tone is going to be right from the outset so that if she doesn't play along it'll make her seem kind of like she's no fun Mm -hmm. like like he's trying to trick her a little bit or something but she doesn't play along and he keeps trying it and i'm just kind of like when are you going to figure out ted that's not how to engage with her Mm. i all all i can help thinking is like every time when we saw him go in the first time and do his what's your favorite book fountainhead surprise Mm -hmm. i'll Mm -hmm. tell you why and she's like this is interesting so this is how you engage with people i would have been so shaken By her sitting back and just observing me out loud to my face that I would Mm -hmm. never try to keep that going. And the fact that he is still on the same bullshit is wild to me. Trying like even more. Yeah. Like instead of. He's just turning it up. Like Mm -hmm. that's the solution. Solution to what? First of all. (laughs) But secondly, what do you think is going to like. 
it just feels like he wants her to not be involved and he's trying to build a wall between her and what's going on with the team because he doesn't like her poking around in his territory mm. doing anything to help people because that is his domain and it's a uh, very selfish first of all way to behave and it's also like so short-sighted because ted there is a there's room for both of your methods mm -hmm. you know there's just no reason it has to be either one of you specifically so and you think it's more territory based like this is his his team his players and trying to keep her outside of his business basically yeah and especially when he says, I know just what Isaac needs. And then she's gone and they ask, well, what does he need? And he just says, I don't know. No idea. <laughs> like, it's not like she's grading you, Ted. It's one thing to lie to somebody if they're your boss mm -hmm. and you need to act like you know what's going on. Fine. You know, but the, she he's acting like she's going to give him a report card at the end of this season. And he has to, like, keep this this illusion of being completely in control up i got news for you ted she doesn't think you're in control in the first place like what you do in this episode winds up working out don't get me wrong but again this is just evidence that you guys can coexist mm -hmm. it's not evidence that she isn't necessary i mean you weren't working for danny he needed somebody there was a real trauma there you know versus isaac who is just kind of like losing focus and confidence in himself danny went through something horrible mm -hmm. so it's ugh, it's just and, hard to watch and we know other teammates have been going to see her on their own mm -hmm. we saw colin go in we saw zero go in we know uh jamie went in though we don't know exactly what they ended up looking like but <laughs> i well, really we could all imagine he just talked about himself the whole time when it was fine <laughs> i keep thinking about what would happen if he found out beard had gone mm. because i feel like that would feel like a betrayal to him in a way that would maybe bring to the surface some of what he is refusing to deal with regarding his feelings about her mm. you know when it's the team he can act like that those these are my boys i'm in charge of them but if it's beard that's a colleague mm -hmm. and a friend and you can't get like that with him and not kind of make it clear it's not about the job anymore right. you know right um and we know from his conversation with rebecca that he doesn't really respect what dr sharon does mm -mm. he doesn't have any respect for that particular field yeah um so, hmm. so yeah, this, uh, what he comes up with, he, cause he's sitting there and we have this moment that's so awful. He says, Nate is having a hard time. This oh, episode. Man. <laughs> he says, I got to get a big dog to deal with Isaac because he's a big dog and he's not going to respond to somebody who's not also a big dog. Mm -hmm. And Nate, takes a breath and says okay i'll do it which first of all it's wild to me that nate thought this about himself considering what just went down <laughs> there's a real disconnect somewhere in there for him to be like yeah i'll do it nate you couldn't get the window table what do you think you're doing with the head <laughs> of the team a, a, an aggressive dude like not a bad boy he's a good boy but he has a very strong personality mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and like we know nate can pull a strong personality out also but he doesn't do it often and it was just a remarkable thing for me that he put himself out there in this way to begin with and then ted laughs did you think Nate was joking? Did you have like a like a laugh mm. like the same way Ted did, or you you realized, oh, he's serious? Yeah, 100%. so were you su were you surprised that Ted laughed right in his face? I was surprised, and like Beard doesn't, so clearly there there's something about the way that Ted views Nate versus the way Beard views Nate that is not the same, mm. and that's interesting to me. Mm. Um. Maybe it's just that Ted is so distracted in this moment that he's not really like considering his reaction, you know, 
because this will happen sometimes if you're sort of thinking about something else and a person says something that normally you would guard your reaction on it a little bit but your mind is somewhere else you can reveal a little bit too much about how you actually feel Mm -hmm. and uh i did i did i did this one time owen's grandma was she's always trying to get owen to come back to church and she said something about I think you'd have really liked today's sermon to Owen. It was about revelations. And I just went. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just, I just automatically thought she was fucking joking <laughs> because that's insane <laughs> to think that's something that he would be like interested. I just completely let it out and then realized the instant I did it and the look she gave me, I was super wrong and I needed to contain that shit. <laughs> and she's oh she's very gracious and she just let it go uh, but i feel like i hurt her feelings a little bit on that one i'm pretty sure you did mm-hmm. <laughs> laughing in that woman's face like I that was it's her God. It's just like, you could have said it, it was about anything else and nothing would have gotten me to laugh like it was about revelations which that is the thing that is the most ridiculous it's and in revelations about the Bible. people <laughs> revelations is a joke it is the fevered ramblings of people who had too much fucking peyote or something (laughs) and they are writing about eyeballs floating that are on fire and the horror of this place is going to be dragged by like really what what are you even (laughs) doing no 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 none of it so you know if you're gonna be talking about like oh it was about moses it was about noah it was about look i'm all i'm gonna say old testament really mostly okay well all right <clears throat> then i'm fine you say revelations and it just feels <laughs> like it's a fucking punchline in and of itself because revelations only gets brought up in my circle as a punchline <laughs> it's only ever used to demonstrate the goofiness of a thing it's never serious and, and and it should not be taken as such. <laughs> it just should not. That no, is no offense to all you believers out there. <laughs> full offense. <laughs> full offense. If you believe in revelations, you are goofy. Oh, people tried to make it literal and ruined it. You know, like we don't need to. <laughs> oh. And goddamn, but my dad's church was all about revelations. They just could not get enough of that shit. And that Mm -hmm. whole, like, focus on, like, the one world order and Mm -hmm. the money turning into, like, one. And and so when the euro came out, they were losing their fucking minds. Everybody's going to have a chip in their wrist. It's going to be the The mark of the the devil. (laughs) Yeah, I remember. Beazelbub tracking Uh, your (laughs) movements. I don't feel like he needs that. I remember. Oh yeah, the nineties, the late nineties mm. was a was a heady time for evangelical yeah circles. They, it was the two thousand was coming. Y two K was on the horizon, and new technology was emerging, and people were losing their fucking minds. It was always so funny to me too because he was so paranoid about new technology, but he always wanted to buy the latest gadgets and stuff mm. like he couldn't help himself he that's loved the, it that's the kid in him that liked the mm-hmm. toys <laughs> and so he would buy stuff but then he would do weird shit to like try and act like it wasn't as dangerous like he was getting around it somehow and i'm like you're just ruining that and avoiding the warranty like that's not <laughs> gonna do anything uh he definitely one of the first adopters of just putting tape over everything that had a camera <laughs> Which I know Rashawn so, so also he does. Was, he was an innovator then. I can respect that. <laughs> uh, and I told you about he, him being a prepper for Y2K too. Oh my God, that's right. Yeah. We had a whole basement full of like those giant Costco things of mayo. Cans and cans of beans. Any, I didn't know any preppers. It's weird too because I, I ran with a... A real unseemly circle <laughs> right around the, that time. But by the time we got really close to 2000, I had left like that part of my life. It had kind of like calmed down a little bit. So by mm-hmm. the time we actually got to like 1999 and I wasn't really associating with those people that much anymore. So 
Yeah, I don't know what they those people got up to by nineteen. I'll tell you 99. what they got up to on January second, two thousand, <laughs> and that was a big pot of chili to use up all the canned beans that they had stored up for no reason. A lot of food going to the food pantry, which I guess is a good thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, okay, so yeah, he uh, poor Nate just looks super sad here. Yeah. And we cut then to Keely, who has organized a like this thing with Nespresso, and so she's giving away these machines to the players. And uh, can I just say, Zorro is American? You mean the actor? Oh, who is the, the ca- player that asks the- if he can get cash back? That is Zorro. He is Canadian. He's from Montreal. Okay. Because he has like a very American accent in that moment. No. Oh. And I was just like, a word? Because the way they pronounced his name, I was assuming that he was like Spanish. Um, oh, no. He's supposed to be like French. I don't feel like he's ever had a, a, a like series of lines long enough for me to get an accent from him. So this mm. was the first time I really gotcha. noticed him was like, Oh, I had this all wrong. <laughs> um, yeah. When he goes to see Dr. Sharon, she talks to him in French after we see her talking to Danny in Spanish. And that like, was, maybe that was what I was sort of like, yeah. getting, okay, that's it. That's and, it. Uh, and it's a, like a, just another like weird thing for Ted to, that she can speak to these players and their in their languages, their native languages. And he can, it's just like, this bitch is showing up and she's just making me look real bad. <laughs> <laughs> so Keely is setting this up and as she is, Rebecca is over here giggling at her phone. Oh my God, that giggle, that first giggle. And me. we find <laughs> out something, which is, it appears Rebecca is texting with Ted. And oh. I don't know why i did not see that coming because it's a whole thing that they do not have their photos on this app but it seemed pretty clear to me the transition between her typing this thing and smiling at her phone and then ted smiling in a way at his phone as he types i'm like that's the smile of the flirt in the first stages of the flirtings Mm. and it makes a lot of sense because i had said before that their personalities kind of went well like as a foil for each other but I don't like this. And I don't know what, how this would develop. Her username is like boss girl or something. Mm-hmm. And his is like KJV, something initials that I was like trying to figure out what those would mean. And I don't know. She is texting to the initials are, and if somebody correct me in the chat, I think it's L N D. One five two mm, or something. Okay. Um, but um, yeah, I I believe that these are. Oh, Erica says those are you yeah. got mail references. Yeah, I wasn't okay. gonna. I wasn't gonna say anything, but yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, because what's her face is Shop Girl, if I remember. And you've got mail. What a fucking awful movie! I Ugh. never watched it. So disgusting. He oh, is, like, is it? If, if, look, it's not like the the movie in its small bits is cute, but what it is is so, that she owns a small independent bookstore, and, and he is like with Barnes and Noble and buys her out and right. kills her company, and then they wind up together. Which even as a, a young child, I was like, that feels fucked up. Do and they not know who each other is, and they meet like online or something? Is that what the they is that meet the premise online? But they have also met in person and been very adversarial in person because she knows who he is and he's been at like events and stuff. So they have like bitten each other's heads off in person. Uh, and then they have this real cute flirty thing going on online because they don't gotcha, know who each other is. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. Gotcha. And that just really grossed me out that the whole movie, it doesn't even end with him sparing her little bookstore. It ends with him fucking closing her down. 
But it doesn't matter just, because he's super rich and they're going to be together. So she doesn't need. So a she doesn't anymore. need her own thing uh, yeah. anymore. She yeah. doesn't need to have her own little reading hour where she reads to children for the pure enjoyment of it. Because yeah. who cares about her loves and hates and desires and dreams? And this was their second <laughs> go round, right? Because they were in the other one together that was like hugely, hugely popular. Sleep which was in like Seattle. the remake, right? Yeah, kind and of. I've yeah. seen bits and pieces. I, I've probably seen that one, but I only remember it from like clips you know i'm pretty sure i probably watched the whole movie at some point on on cable but i don't really remember much about it sleepless in seattle was fine whatever i don't like rom-coms i'm just gonna say that i've never been a rom-com person oh you aren't either no i uh i haven't watched most of them like the older ones with these two um harry met sally i mean come on i own that one that's like a complete outsider that's not even in the genre yeah that's true yeah it's its own thing agreed joe versus the volcano is a fucking great movie that i haven't watched in 30 years but (laughs) have not it was not aware that was a rom-com i don't think it's it's a tom hanks and meg ryan movie is it oh i didn't know she was in that from like the 80s um chris is saying that she was in that i don't remember her i I wouldn't have remembered that she was in that if he hadn't said something in the chat Um, yeah i um i'm looking in the chat oh chris said that i've been having a hard time at work and got the postcard the other day and it meant a lot so thanks oh you're welcome chris oh so nice (laughs) i love this other app that rebecca's also on (laughs) oh my god (laughs) <laughs> and she shows Keely what a spectacular name right where's that's the really, rest of it oh my that's, god that's really really funny more revealing <laughs> and less it's a good way to say that um erica is saying or was it erica it's bet no chris says parker posey got on my nerves but it's better than runaway bride which i have not seen i haven't seen that either um, that's that julia roberts richard gear movie where they put them back together to try to recreate no. the fucking magic of uh, what's the one they did together that everybody loved the prostitute movie, right? Um, what's it? Pretty Woman. Yes. Yeah. So then they throw them together again for I another it Pretty Lady. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but that's really funny to me. It really is. I don't know why either, <laughs> but it is really funny. <laughs> Um, oh god, guys, have you listened to Pretty Woman lately? That was on somewhere. The song? Yes. He literally goes, Wow. Yeah, Mercy. Does. Yeah, he does. It's the best part of the song. <laughs> I can't. I have a soft spot for uh, Roy Orbison, though. I can't help it. The whole thing is like, I'm on a cat collar. Oh shit, she's coming over. No, why are we telling people that works? <laughs> She's coming over to throw a drink in your face. Stop it. Um, I thought he was blind my whole young adult life because of the glasses that he wore. <laughs> because I was only familiar with Stevie Wonder and yeah. fucking Ray Charles. Yeah. I was like 17 and I said like out loud to a room full of people that he was blind and everybody was like, bitch, boy. <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing like finding out you're wrong in that manner. I swear it is a real moment. I said some shit like, you know, I don't, I'm so surprised people don't talk about him being blind more often. They won't shut up about it when they talk about Stevie Wonder. <laughs> it's fucking. He just oh. was about the aesthetic, apparently. <laughs> That's amazing. I, I didn't know. Um, but yeah, the the whole thing with rom-coms for me has always felt like I never really liked the chemistry between the actors. I never saw many rom-coms where the couple that's supposed to be kind of interested in one another felt very compelling to me. Mm. It always just is like, oh, he's a hot guy. Sure. And he's like, unlike the other guy that you're dating, sure. But unless the other guy was an outright asshole, and they often were, but it just felt like you could just dump that guy. You don't have to go for the, like, just dump that guy for the sake of dumping him because he sucks. Or the other guy was like, not a bad dude, but it just wasn't, Mm -hmm. you know? And I don't know. It always just felt so like wimpy to me a lot of the time (laughs) just very there was not enough honestly i think what it comes down to there wasn't enough sex it was always this sort of like 
weirdly chaste thing that was mm-hmm. supposedly enough to like change their lives and i guess i just don't really buy that most of the time except yeah. in like a uh, witness in which there is yeah. no sex but it works <laughs> There's a, uh, and oh my God, we're like 10 minutes into the episode and an hour so sorry, into the everybody. podcast. Uh, but yeah, there's a, there's a weird thing that we, we do with sex where we kind of like, sex makes the love, not love. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's unfortunate that we still have that kernel, you know, in every fucking thing. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So they all, right. all, they get the coffee makers and then we go to Rebecca. Uh, Wait. Wait, what? Nate oh. tries to get oh, I'm sorry. an espresso machine. That's right. And he rolls up. There's one left. It's unclear who it's for. I wish that Keely had led with that. Instead of, these are just for the players. Mm-hmm. Said, I'm sorry, this one's reserved for somebody specific. Because that's a different thing. It feels different, you know. But instead, it's just, it's not for you, though. And it's a combo of him, like, not being quite important enough to qualify for free stuff. And also the embarrassment of going and and assuming a thing that is Mm -hmm. definitely not true. Yeah. And so he tries to cover it with, like, I don't like free coffee anyway. It always (laughs) She's, like, so sympathetic. You see her looking at him with just this expression of just, like, oh, babe. Oh, babe. (laughs) It's just very – she's feeling his pain, you Mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Yeah. but anyway, okay, so this is when we go to Rebecca, and she's on this chat. He asks what she wants out of the app, and she's, like, really not sure what to say. And then Higgins comes in, and his wife calls with his, like, his ringtone going off. She's like a rainbow. And uh, knowing that they are actually married makes this even more adorable although i have no idea whether this is their real <laughs> meeting in person story yeah. or not probably I not w- i would love it were, if it were true i have no idea but uh it would be very sweet if it were yeah um because that would also mean that he plays like bass for real for real mm-hmm. <laughs> um <clears throat> but yes yeah, uh keely had told rebecca that you have to have a brand you know mm-hmm. you gotta have a uh have a personal brand so that's what she asked Higgins about. And he tells the story of, I love picturing him too. I, Rebecca's like, it's really hard to think of you as a young man. <laughs> yeah. Which some people are just like that. Like mm-hmm. you cannot picture them ever being kids. But uh, he tells this cute story of being like a punk rock kid and having like spiked hair. And this song comes on and he can't help himself. And he forgets that he's got this persona that he's wearing out to the pub and has a moment of just being his authentic self which apparently includes playing airbase yep and dumps a pint of beer on his head and everybody erupts into laughter and except one woman who hands him a dish towel a dirty bar towel to, to wipe his head and they've been married for 29 years and it is the sweetest bestest most wholesome thing ever <laughs> have you ever done the thing where you forget you're holding a glass and you just dump it or like at least start to dump it because oh, i did yeah. that the other day and i was just like oh my god yeah 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 <sighs> i do it uh when i'm trying to like hold especially if i'm out like or a smoke break or something and i'll have like my phone a coffee and a cigarette mm-hmm. and then I'll, like, I'll i'll go to like text something and forget this hand's got a coffee in it and i'll do the, the thing oh, no. the, like yeah yeah uh, <laughs> even worse you're dumping it toward your phone yeah I hate that. but i haven't had a full-on disaster but i've come very close <laughs> many times and will again and rebecca asks if you saw what was on her phone and he says oh i have teenage boys i don't look at people's phones over their shoulder i used to this man looks like he has seen some things (laughs) there's like a (laughs) helicopter in the background and fucking bombs going off (laughs) yep this is a flashback in his mind um and when she asks him about how he presented himself and his brand it boils down to being yourself is the best brand So she just finally responds to this text with love, I suppose, and immediately chucks her phone across the room. Yeah, she's like, like it's on fire. (laughs) I love this so much because I know that exact feeling of Mm -hmm. just like, oh, God, I can't believe I said it. I can't believe I said it. Oh, Mm -hmm. my God, I can't believe I said it. We don't know what he said back to her in response to that specifically. I don't think we see. 
No, um, she, she throws the phone immediately. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, later on when they're still talking again, I don't feel like oh, that's on the screen anymore. That, yeah. Um, But it's a cute moment seeing her making herself vulnerable and clearly yeah. very, like, you know, she's doing her best. She had her whole revelation about how she has to be vulnerable and that's what she wants. Mm-hmm. But it is not easy to do in a real mm-hmm. way. I love too. There's a when Leslie's wife calls, he's just like, "Uh, I'll call her back later. Keep it fresh." <laughs> well, let me just text her. That's what I'm doing right? <laughs> because that is actually what keeps it fresh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Letting them know. Letting them fucking know. <laughs> So this is when Nate ducks his head into Keeley's office and basically is like, can you make me famous? And they have a bit of a back and forth about you don't want fame, bruh. And he's like, yeah, I kind of do, though. (laughs) And she then admits like, yeah, you do get a lot of free stuff. I will say that. What it but. You get it and you don't know what to do with it. And he's like, I know what I want. I want a table at this restaurant. And she's like, oh. Yeah. Well, Just that like this, we could do. Hold this on. Is very doable. You're talking about this big abstract thing, but you want a very specific thing. Yeah. <laughs> so they go to Rebecca's office and she is excited to book him a table at any number of exclusive restaurants. Exactly. Very like high end, you know, fancy pants places. And her Rebecca's face when she realizes what he's asking. Oh my god, she's so excited to do this favor for him. That was what I really liked about this scene. Is like a lot of times you, you have somebody who's like got this power to get you the table, and they sort of like are smug about it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But instead, she's just like, oh, oh, sweet, I know which one. And she like names a couple of places, Le Atelier Rubichon, <laughs> which I love that that's such a name. And then it's followed by Chiltern Firehouse, which I'm like, that feels very not in the same category, but I believe you. I know that you know better than me. Um, and he says it's a taste of Athens in Tooting. And I really can't handle the names of these little like boroughs or whatever you would call them in London because tooting is not allowed. That is goofy. <laughs> That is a silly ass name. And I went, uh, went and like looked into where the name comes from. And evidently they kind of don't know. Nah, and the best they sense. can do is that there was like a watchtower there. And tooting is sort of close to like Tauten, which is to watch. And they're like, maybe it was the town of the watchtower and it just evolved into tooting. And I'm like, I don't believe you. That sounds fake. <laughs> it sounds completely fake. It sounds like they're trying to make some, they're trying to retrofit some mm-hmm. kind of like, you know, impressive backstory to the ridiculous name of their town. Very it's much It's probably so. because there was a lot of noise and people were like, that fucking town will not shut up right? that goddamn tooting. This, there was a <laughs> giant like car horn manufacturing plant in the town, but nobody likes to talk about that part. Um, and she tries to just do the be assertive and he does his thing for a minute and immediately she begins to understand. I love that her first solution is I'll just buy the restaurant and she's dead ass serious. Yeah. (laughs) But when she starts to see what he is like in this moment realizes that they really have some work to do and is yeah. like right. she's like clear my calendar for the rest of the day <laughs> so i'm jumping ahead to that session i love he like he gives his name shelly and keely responds with mr shelby and he's like you're right i should have said shelby <laughs> <laughs> like, that's not your name and then like they try again and she gets he fucking name. loses it he calls her a kestrel you dithering kestrel <laughs> he a definitely kestrel. got it in him he's got it in it's him it's somewhere in there it's, it's just it, under it, pressure yep yep and he, if he lets it sit too long it just it's, pops out in ways that are so then is. he like is arguing with the hostess when it is his name she got it right later yeah but he's like no i said no sorry no that is my name you got that sorry yeah nate is uh you know what we have seen from him so far and in this episode towards the end when with his father who i we've have we seen his his father before Mm -mm. 
Okay, this is we the first just time heard of about him, him being a big stick up his ass type. Yeah, he just Priggish. seems like, and Nate has told us, you know, from buying presents to what it was like growing up, his father is impossible to satisfy. Mm -hmm. Apparently, come overly critical. Yeah, you know, and this is what we you get when you raise a child like that. You get a Nate if you're fucking lucky. Sometimes it goes way in the opposite yeah, direction true. and nobody wants to deal with that. But, you know, your best case scenario is you get someone like this who has no confidence, yeah. no self-esteem, no self-worth, but a boiling rage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to back it up here and go to the kebab place. Uh, Roy is trying to finagle getting free kebabs and this man is not having it. He has the Roy's picture up and he's yeah. basically like, you're going to feel good about that, Roy, and that's what you're going to get. There's a picture of George went up on the wall, Norm from Cheers. I didn't notice and that. Delightful. I feel like that is Jason Sudeikis' uncle in real life. Oh. But I don't have time to check the Google machine. Thank you. I knew Erica would be on top of it. That's his uncle. <laughs> and so I love that they just Ugh. threw that in there. <laughs> I hate finding out things like that. Oh, because it, it, it makes, you, makes you think of like nepotism and stuff? Yeah. It's just like, oh, okay. That's why you're here. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> like, no offense, Jason Sudeikis. You're talented and whatnot. But like, there are lots of talented people who just don't have an <laughs> uncle like George Went, who's a literal legend. Do you hold that also against- And they are going to be here. Did you hold that against George Clooney? I don't know anything about. It. I know, I held everything against George Clooney. I have never oh, liked that man. Snap. Hot take. I was not expecting that. <laughs> he has never been charming to me. I have never found him attractive. He has always been adequate. <laughs> and that is where Damn. he sits for me. That is harsh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was attractive for like two minutes. <laughs> Uh, and it was all about the haircut. And the minute he changed his hair, I stopped seeing it for him. Mm. But there was like two minutes in the early 90s where he was rocking like that Caesar cut that always did it for me. It wasn't even that good of a haircut, but it just did something. For What's me. a Caesar cut? I'm going to look that up. You can't describe <sighs> yeah. it. I can tell already by your Thank face. You. you know it as soon as you see it, though. It's the fucking, it's almost like they've got bangs. But oh, bangs. God. You like that? I did. Girl, ugh. I did. No. Uh... You were like eight at <laughs> the time. I oh, was like. <laughs> this is bad. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. I'm going to do Caesar Cut George Clooney and just see him specifically. It's I like don't have time to be doing this, but. They really don't. It's like the first year oh, he was no, on no, ER no, or no, something. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Listen, don't judge me, y'all. Y'all are like eight years old at the time. You don't know what my life was like in <sighs> 1994. You don't know it was it was hard out here. Look, I'm not trying to judge <laughs> because I like fucking Jonathan Taylor Thomas with his. Oh my part, god! Part, whatever that the is, fuck was going on, I did not get that. But it's a very it's a very like generational thing because mm -hmm. I know that that was like the heartthrob city yep. for like kids that are about your age, right? Yep. No, but it, yeah. And do? then you transition to the PC, like, over-gelled spiky hair that's, like, tousled, but, like... Oh, yeah. And that was, like, the real early 2000s with the... It's a lot uh, of the insane tips and, and... Yep, yep, mm -hmm, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was... By that time, I was, like, give me a shave head with, like, a body full of tattoos and a felony record. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. So, back to... Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> so, uh, we go back to... Uh, well, I want to just touch on Rebecca and... Nate and Keely, because you jumped ahead, and then we'll go back to the okay the kebab place, because we have when Rebecca is trying to coach. Uh, oh right, Nate. of course. I don't know. I can't believe I right? skipped over this. Yes, and she did. This was this took the internet by storm. The whole world was obsessed with this one fucking line. After Rebecca does the make yourself as big as it can be, and it's just so impressive. This woman is a fucking goddess. She really does seem like she's eight feet tall in this mm -hmm. moment. I don't know how she did it. Like, I really don't know how she did it. It looks like a camera trick, partially. You like, think they so? definitely have leaned it so that she looks very much taller than all of them. <sighs> but also, she is just taller. She, and also, she is like playing it up. And she's the breathing that she's uh, doing with that back of the throat thing is like a mm. chi technique. Like, mm. that's a thing that gets done in certain yoga classes I've gone to uh. where you like. <sighs> 
and you do it like with your tongue sticking out um mm. so what she's doing is like considered legit in uh the, whole, <laughs> the idea of directing energy and you know learning to control that and keely looks at her and just says fuck you're amazing let's invade let's <laughs> invade <laughs> Yeah, and a, a, good mil- a million Facebook profiles were born. <laughs> <laughs> but it is just a spectacular moment for uh, for her as an actress. I love that so much. And I love Keely's delivery of that line because it really does feel like she is watching someone and she can't get over there even in the same room on the same planet. It's a very like overwhelmed looking like yeah. moment. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is just it's so great. Um, so yeah, so Ted ambushes Roy in his favorite kebab place. I also love that they all call it donor kebab. And I love that because in my little German class, that's a word that shows up all the time for me for some reason. Donor or kebab or donor kebab? Both. It's donor kebab. Okay. Um, What is donor kebab specifically? The combo? I don't know. I don't know. Donor kebab versus kebab, but please continue. I'm sorry. (laughs) So, uh... Ted shows up because uh, Keely has told him where to find Roy. And Roy is like, Keely texted me to expect that. What did he say? A uh, mustachioed uh, surprise that I, would make me angry. <laughs> I think that's what it is. <laughs> Donor is Turkish and means turn slash turning. Roasted veal meat on a rotating grill. So it's just a kebab then. I think that if it's a like a regular kebab that isn't donor is just put on a grill. Whereas but a not donor turned? kebab is like is on a rotating spit like thing, like a rotisserie chicken. I thought you know all kebabs were on were rotated like that. That's why they were on the the skewers. But, but I mean, I, like I don't know. What I think that it's like when they're skewered in this way, it's in part of a machine that turns them oh. versus you skewering them and turning them yourself on the. Gotcha. But I may be wrong about that. I don't gotcha. know. I don't know. Um, and. Uh, so Ted has ambushed Roy to get some help with Isaac mm-hmm. and also to ask him if he'd like to be a coach, yep. which Roy is not interested in. He has Thank no you interest. Very much. Yeah. So he agrees to help out with Isaac after a little bit of pressing. The man who runs this kebab shop comes by and uh, says that he was in school to be a doctor and was very good at it but it was just not what he was meant to do quit a week before graduation he also is like a father and son which what right <laughs> but okay. white people all look alike <laughs> it's fine um they're so, also like the same age <laughs> right yeah and uh roy agrees and we get this like amazing scene where where Ted is leading Isaac to the meeting spot and they're like texting Roy to let him know they're there and his phone lights up and he's right in front of them and they jump. It's the, like the Roy funny. Kent jump scares is like a running thing throughout, <laughs> throughout the show. We've had a couple and they always crack me up. <laughs> um, he looks like such a fucking creeper when that light shines on it his comes face. up from under his face like he's about to start telling a fucking ghost story. <laughs> And yeah, he is here at his like housing that he grew up in where he would come when his head was all fucked up to play soccer. And uh, he has brought Isaac, who at first is like, I'm a pro and I will kill them. And he's like, oh, yeah, he gets his fucking bell we'll rung. We'll see. <laughs> yep. So he's like, the whole point of this is for you to remember that this is a game and you need to have fun. And by the end, Isaac indeed has like come out of his head yeah and is having fun this is a great sequence it's a Mm -hmm. lot of fun to watch i love the other um kids on the field that are like not intimidated by it because i mean this is like having i don't want to name a particular athlete because i don't know any but like like (laughs) you're in your neighborhood basketball court and fucking you know i don't know not that isaac is lebron james but you know some superstar just shows up at your neighborhood playground and wants to like go I love you know? that one of the kids is even like, you've been pathetic, mate. Something yeah. like that. He's just looking like roasting him. And uh, I think we see, um, isn't Shannon playing too? The girl that we've seen, Ted and Beard. Oh, is she? I didn't while. notice that. Okay, I'm not sure, but I thought that we saw her here. And uh, there's a really funny throwaway line to it. It's so dumb, but 
uh, as fucking Roy and Ted are talking at the chain link, fi- chain mm-hmm. link fix, chain link fence. There it is. God, <laughs> there's a a like a throwaway showgirls joke. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> and, then, and then Roy is like, you know, I dated Gina Gershon, and Ted is like, that makes me really, really happy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, um, this little bit, I just enjoy, especially considering that Keely at one point had to, like, remind Roy how lucky he is to play a game, even Mm -hmm. though he walks around mad all the time. Mm -hmm. It's Mm -hmm. like, feels like he's sort of paying that forward a little bit, that lesson. A a little bit, yeah. Uh, Yeah, I like to think that as well. Um, Eric in the chat says it's a different person. It's not Shannon. It's another, uh, person playing football. Okay. So, all right, let's go to Nate with his parents at the restaurant. His mother is trying so hard to be to run interference, basically mm-hmm. between him and his dad. Which you can this tell is always she, the way this goes in families. She's like this. been doing this the entire time, right? Mm-hmm. It's so clear. His dad's face to this whole sequence mm-hmm. is really bothering me, and maybe I got some shit I need to work. His on. face reminded me of my dad when my dad oh, decided God. he was going to be in a mood, mm-hmm. and uh, he just had this flat, closed look. My dad actually resembles him in a lot of ways. Mm. So looking at him, I was just like, oh, fucking God. Like, I, th- he would be fine. And then you would say the wrong thing that would, like, prick at his sensibilities as a Christian man. And all of a sudden, lights out. Nothing happening. Mm-hmm. And the thing that infuriated me so bad was that you'd be like, what's wrong? Nothing. Mm-hmm. What? Mm-hmm. No, nothing. Like we all can't see the complete one eighty. You just did. Like you haven't like, caused a pall to descend on the room of mm-hmm. people, and you know it, mm-hmm. and you are depending on that happening because you want to control everyone here, mm-hmm. and you're going to act like that's not exactly what you intended. Yeah. What mm-hmm. me? Okay, what sure. are you talking about? I'm <sighs> fine. You're imagining my complete apparent change in, in mood and demeanor. <sighs> Yeah. His dad makes a series of faces throughout this whole bit that are just like, oh, of course. Yeah. This is such a chore. He's not going to be, you know what I mean? Like the whole, like they're taking, you're taking them out for dinner and his father is behaving like, I can't believe I can, I'm even here. Mm-hmm. This is supposed to be your favorite fucking restaurant. I can't even believe I'm here. Ugh. Yep. <laughs> So she starts to lead them to the corner table. No, she does. They seat themselves at the corner table. And he kind of loses it, goes into the bathroom, and is like, I need to get my head right so that I can do this. And this is when he says, you're Nathan fucking Shelley, and spits at himself in the mirror, which is a real weird move to me. Yeah. It's It's like he's hyping himself up by shitting on himself. Mm -hmm. It's like a weird, like, what? Yep. It's like... Like, you pathetic piece of shit. Exactly. You know? That's exactly, exactly it. It's awful. I hated this. It works temporarily, but it's not the vibe. Yeah, it's self-loathing. Yep. And the only way he can get, muster up what he needs in this moment is to shit on who he is. Mm -hmm. Because who he is isn't getting him the things he wants. It's not getting him the respect he wants. It's not getting him the table he wants. It's not getting his father's approval. So who I am is a piece of shit. So I got to be something else. I got to be someone else. Because this guy, this guy ain't it. Oh my God. Erica said in the chat, I watched this with some friends and they did not realize that Nate's dad was black. I didn't think he was black either. I thought that he was a mix. Because he looks like he could be Indian- you know, like, didn't I honestly, there comes I, a point where <laughs> if you do not have like a particularly distinct look, I'm just like, ah, eh, <laughs> who knows? I thought that that was black, um, might be, might be mixed, but I would still say black. Um, and the mom looks to, to be East Asian of some kind, like mm-hmm. maybe, um, either Pakistani or Indian, um, but the father definitely looks like he's black to me. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I could know, be wrong. I could be a hundred percent wrong. <laughs> oh, I'm assuming Erica's mm-hmm. saying this because she knows that. Mm-hmm. So I'm assuming you're right. 
but it's also amusing to me because I was just being like, he looks like my dad. Yeah, and my dad is like, who knows what's going on with his heritage? But that man was also remember kind of puzzling to look at. Remember how surprised we were when you got your uh, ancestry or whatever you mm-hmm. did? We were so sure. Yeah, my dad looks like he's like at least uh, like a quarter mm-hmm. black. You know, there's yep. something up there somewhere. But uh, my DNA came back and that was not in my makeup <laughs> too heavy at all. My makeup had a lot of Asian in it, which surprised me. <laughs> which then after checking up later turned into Native American. So mm. now I'm like 19% Native. That makes a lot of sense because, yeah. you know, as a South American mm-hmm. um, indigenous culture, so that, that makes a lot of sense. The only thing that's a bummer, and I completely respect them doing this. I think it's a good idea. But 23andMe does not give you any info about the kind of tribe that you may be coming from. Good. And they do that because white people are just going to fucking try yep. shit. So yep. it's smart and I respect that. <laughs> but also I am deeply curious, you know, I am like, where from? What? What's what's in there? Um, but anyway, so he goes out there and he does this whole like, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to come and sit over here. We're going to order a bottle of wine and a starter and our entrees and dessert. And you are going to be astonished at how quickly we can get out of here. Basically, I'm going to make you a deal that we're going to be as little trouble as possible. Mm -hmm. We're going to spend a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. We're not going to be a hassle. Just and let like us have again, the table. Mm-hmm. it works, and I appreciate it. But I also hate that he has to sort of like sell it by being like, "We're going to make this not the night that it could otherwise be. Mm-hmm. Like we're going to have a time limit." And he isn't giving himself a specific time limit, but there's just a sense of like having to minimize it in order to get her to agree that I was just like, "Oh, I hate this for you," mm-hmm. and. For a moment, he's real puffed up on himself and then is like, and maybe I could get your number. And she says, no, thanks. I'm picky. And yeah. he, oh, well, yeah, me too. But <laughs> and you can see that he kind of deflates there. Yeah. And then when he calls his parents, he does he like this whistles. whistle. And his, his dad has to have a like a little got to get a little jibe in. Right. Mm-hmm. He's got to, you know. We're not, I'm not a dog or we're not dogs, which, okay, you probably shouldn't be whistling at people. Yeah. But also you're trying to get their attention. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, And I like that he looks up at his dad who gives him the most half-hearted smile and Nathan is beaming because mm-hmm. that apparently indicates approval, which is wild because that is yep. nothing. Yep. And it's very, very hard to get, it seems, mm-hmm. just that bare little bit. Yeah. Ugh. So yeah. that's that for the moment. And what he sort of moves on to do is like wear a suit to their game the next day. They are playing someplace they're Wednesday play, on they're, Saturday. They're playing Sheffield Wednesday on Saturday. And this leads to a fantastic little back and forth bit that I just enjoyed every second of. This because... is not... <laughs> there just comes a point where it's time to not use the name that it's been given. Uh, we also get the answer to the knock-knock joke from a couple of episodes ago from a win. Right. Uh, it's like last season, I think it is. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, where Ned... Uh, Which is like, this is an old joke. I, I'm not uh, yeah. clear on the, it was worth the wait. Was it? <laughs> I don't feel it was, but all right. I'm, maybe you're just trying to save his feelings. I don't know what you're doing, but all right, fine. And uh, then we have, what did you think of this, this, uh, this old couple in the stands at the beginning of the game telling their little, their romance story? This is or so funny. Because this is for those who don't know, and I don't know how you wouldn't, but this is a <laughs> reference to when Harry Mess Alley, where they mm-hmm. do this inter- interview with uh, other couples who are all actors. I was very bummed to find out. I thought that they were real couples and we were getting their actual story, but they're all actors and this is all invented. Oh. I know. <laughs> Super sad. You're like me in the Roy Orbison glasses thinking that he was really blind. I really thought. I thought that they like went around and got couples as for their stories and were like, we're going to pick the best ones and we're going to put you in our movie. That is nope. the cutest thing I've ever heard. I'm so bummed. 
But yeah, they uh, they have this thing about how he like s- snuck his way in to her very fancy high price seats, and then <laughs> like he was supposed to be kicked out, but she insisted he stay, and they fell in love, and then somebody stole their story and used it to write <laughs> Titanic, and they're in litigation with them now. I just a pretty good joke. I um I think somebody really did sue about Titanic. Really? And yeah. I, I wish I could remember. When this aired, oh I went to like the Googles to try to see what the what the deal was with that. And I think I read that somebody really did try to sue saying that they stole their story for Titanic. <laughs> um so this is when we see Rebecca uh chatting again. I'm mm-hmm. wondering if it shows us her screen. Uh, oh no! It it cuts to a whole new conversation of asking her what she's doing this Saturday. Right. So right, so we right. don't we don't see like the prior conversation about her saying what she's looking for. And uh, Keely keeps trying to be like, just tell him that you're fucking hot and own a football club. Say it. Just and fucking I'm like, say it. If you did that right now, I really wonder what would happen. Genuinely, mm. if I if this is what I think, and it seems like it is. What does Ted do? Because he is the one with the power in that moment. She has said what she is and he hasn't yet. And I really would love to know how he'd handle that. Maybe we'll find out. <laughs> um, um, I love the, when, when this episode, Oh, Erica mentioned that the owl joke was a mistake. <laughs> Apparently they meant to put the answer in the last season, but they forgot it. So they just threw oh it in this God. episode. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's really cute. Um, fuck, what was I about to say? This idea that she is, you think she is talking to Ted mm-hmm. on this app. Um, so, if it's him. You have such a face. <laughs> if it's Ted. Okay. And she tells him, hey, I I own Richmond. What do you think happens next? I genuinely don't know. Because it could go a couple of different ways. And some in some ways, I feel like that's just dependent on Ted's mood at the time. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, and because this is how a lot of us are. If something it happens in a way that like we are left privately to decide without any observation. A lot of times it will be up to just how we're feeling right now. And he may just be like, Oh my God. And just go and see her and be like, boss girl, you know, and, and <laughs> just out himself right away. He might like it, it sort of decide to sort of keep it to himself and and continue talking and to continue her, but I don't chatting. feel like that sounds like him. I don't know. I just i I don't know how. If I think that he would like tell her who he was, but I don't know how he would do it. Gotcha. You gotcha. know. So you don't. Yeah. Okay. That feels like in line with what we know about his character, right? Mm-hmm. Like he wouldn't purposefully engage in deception. Doesn't doesn't really feel like him, right? No. And I really like what keeps coming up for me is that he slept with Sassy, and I just can't like. I have definitely been friends with women who have also slept with a guy that I've slept with. But have you? Yeah, that has never been a problem for me because I, frankly, I mean, a lot of guys are forgettable. I don't like have any like weird like turf issues with it. It just has never come up for me. So oh, okay. Yeah, it's just yeah, something Yeah, I don't like, think it's ever come up. I'll be just like, oh, right. I fucked him too. God, I forgot. Like it's so, oh, you know. I was about to say, oh, that's fun. And then I realized that sounds weird, but I stand by it. That's fun. It's not real. It's just sort of like confusing. I don't know. But they this would be like very recent. And uh, her and Sassy seem like they're cool enough that it wouldn't be that big a deal. But I feel yeah. like it might be just a little strange. I just like- initially at least. I like to think that maybe Rebecca is just like, well, Sassy said that shit was really good, though. Right? <laughs> I, mm, look, he isn't, like, my top choice, but I have to say, I, I have been wondering. <laughs> so maybe I'll just take this uh, filly for a little ride around the pen or whatever they fucking say. I guess he should be a stallion and she's a filly, but I stand by uh, it. You kind of lost it there, but that's fine. It's fine. It's fine. fine. <laughs> um, So... He. This is when he's talking to the fucking to Doctor Sharon in the hall, and it's just like yeah. really difficult. 
And she, he says, I'm just sort of dealing with the terror of knowing what the world is about. Watching a few good friends screaming to let them out. And she says, so you're feeling under pressure. <laughs> this should not have made me laugh as hard as it did, you guys. But I'm really, really easy. I <laughs> laugh so fucking hard. Rashawn <laughs> does laugh pretty, very easily. It's helpful I, for me in the moment when I'm I, recording with you. But sometimes I'm like, everybody does not think this is funny. As she I does. just like to giggle. <laughs> Cannot help it. Everything is so awful all the time that, like, if I have an opportunity to giggle, I'm going to take that shit out. <laughs> I just can't help myself. <laughs> there, you guys, I watched this. I watched two comedy specials last week on Owen's birthday. And one of them I sent you. I watched Sh- it. Shen. Yeah, I watched it. Sh- what was it. his last name? Shing, Shing Wen. Like Shing W-E- Wen. Okay. W-E-N-G. He was great. Delightful. Highly yeah. recommend. And it he's was like very pretty good. family friendly. It was very good. There's no like swearing or anything in it, yeah. I don't think. It's not like super like topical and political. No. It's just like very wholesome, you know. It's very good. And then the other one I watched was the latest from Brian Regan. <laughs> and fucking clip you y'all, <laughs> I haven't laughed this hard in at least two years. I, I never laughed. watched him. He is so... There was a, like a sort of special between this one and uh, the like one I originally got into him with, and that one has some like more political jokes in it, and it's not as good because he's trying to ride a line where he doesn't really say anything mm. and just references, and it doesn't work. But his thing is all about having like a rubber face, and so so much of his comedy doesn't work as just audio. You really have to see him. And he is also clean comedy. He doesn't mm-hmm. swear. And it's, mm-hmm. y'all, there is a bit that I sent Rashawn about how he doesn't like raisins and people always try and convince him that raisins are just grapes. So if he likes grapes, then he should like raisins. <laughs> and I am not going to try and imitate what he does because i can't do that and and like have it be listenable because it is too much for this microphone (laughs) but i have watched this clip 11 times (laughs) since watching the special and laugh until i'm crying literally every time i watch it i don't know why it hit something for me I, i think it's the vibrato that goes into it later on as he starts to get really fucking out of control with it highly recommend his special mm-hmm. i think it was called uh oh fuck i can't remember but it's whatever the latest one is where he now has gray hair and he walks out on yeah. stage and the first thing he says is all right let's talk about the gray hair because you don't hear <laughs> thing I say unless you talk about that off the top i was surprised to see him i didn't know he was still doing stand-up i didn't know he was so i remember him as being like a like an early 2000s kind of guy and mm-hmm. i never really got into him because he was like clean I I just kind of was like, oh, it's not 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 really into that. <laughs> I really just like didn't pay him any attention, so I'm not really familiar with his work. I've seen like a couple of things over the years, but that fucking thing about the raisins and he talks about taking a ham sandwich and leaving it outside <laughs> the sun for it. <laughs> Y'all, I swear to you, uh, he, he starts really to get good. into this like shrieky voice that is just everything. It is it is like my internal monologue. I'm hearing it out loud because I I. I'm unreasonably angry sometimes. And so my head sounds like what he's doing in this <laughs> clip. And it's just so good. Anyway, I'm going to post just the clip so you guys can get a sense of it. But you should watch the whole special mm-hmm. because it's all very funny. <laughs> very good. Um, anyway, okay. So we he is from... in the middle of everything with Dr. Sharon. And this is when Nate walks by in his suit. And he... Nate asks if it's too much and he says what too much class and is joking around but then when Nate walks away he says something about like it is a if you are out to describe the truth leave the elegance to the tailor which is not what that quote means but I guess it's okay (laughs) I don't even really understand what like if you're out to describe the truth leave elegance to the tailor is I pretty sure basically be like if you're telling the truth Stick just it plain. It. Yeah, don't be all fancy and, and elegant. Leave that shit for the tailors. You know what I mean? 
Like, leave your elegance and everything for people who that's their job to do. The truth is just say it plain. But okay. he says it here in a way that doesn't, I don't know, doesn't it seem like it. It felt like what he was saying was, I'm keeping him, I'm trying to make him feel good, but that is too much. Oh, no, I didn't that take it that way. way. I he was saying it, but like, I don't know. Yeah, the way he says it, uh, to Dr. Sharon anyway, it feels very much like it's just sort of like uh uh, like he's complimenting me, hmm. you know, the way, the way he delivers the line. I just thought it was weird because I, I had never really thought the quote, that particular quote, which is a weird quote that I remember being like up in a classroom when I was in high school, you know, how teachers will put like, yeah. shit, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. kind of shit. Um, back when things weren't all attributed to Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh my god that's so specific and random you know what i'm talking about everybody's aunties on ah! fucking facebook is sharing that shit with her silhouette <laughs> did you know she was a size 14 no she was not actually but okay it's fine a size 14 yeah people it's... talk about how she was actually like bigger and it was a size 14 in an era where that was like a size four to six. Like it is not, it's just a number. It doesn't mean anything. It really women doesn't. sizes are made up on like men's sizes, which are Look actual at fat. her body and her fucking waist. And all right, that's a whole other podcast. All We're right. We're not even going to. So then we go to uh soccer Saturday. <laughs> Here's Roy Kent. <laughs> they ask, how do you think he's going to play today? And he says he probably just ate fries and then jerked off. Yeah, there's a, like, like a, a new like teenage phenom who's mm-hmm. playing for the first time, and everybody's all excited to you know see what this kid's going to do. This kid's going to do, it. and Roy's just like, we don't fucking know. Mm-hmm. You know, he just fucking got here. We don't know. And then they show a clip of the team Richmond warming up, and yep. Roy gets to see. The sort of fruit of his labor. He gets to see Isaac out on the field looking relaxed and confident and playful. Mm-hmm. And, and, and he gets to see what he helped accomplish. And yeah. it is a real turning point for him. So he gets up and he takes his mic off and he says, this isn't what I'm supposed to do. And his co-host, whose name I don't remember, is like, Roy. And he says, I have to do this. And they have a moment. <laughs> and apparently this is a reference to the final episode of the British The Office. I was going to ask somebody in the chat. what I mean, it, clearly it's referencing something. I just figured it was another yeah. fucking rom-com that I hadn't seen. I, I didn't recognize this. And Owen had to look it up. And that's what he said. Mm. But uh, I have not seen all of the British The Office. It's too uncomfortable. That's a really weird choice for the theme of this, this episode that they reference something from the office yeah i don't know maybe it's supposed to be more of a rom-com than ours was yeah i I never watched any of it i never watched any of the uk version i watched like one Um, episode and it made me want to crawl out of my own skin i I do not like richie i can't i can't deal with the richie don't get me started whatever his last Mm -hmm. name is Mm -hmm. you know we're not even gonna say it (laughs) but yeah but roy is just like look we are sitting here on tv critiquing these guys we say what we think they should do, and then we come back from commercial and we yell at them because they didn't do what we said they were going to do, and we're nothing. We are nothing. We are on the outside watching, wishing we were on the other side of all of that. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it's very emotional. He gets like kind of choked up. Yeah. And I'm like Keely. I love a I love an emotional Roy Kent. <laughs> he Isaac goes to everybody and has like a specific like it's so- shake that he does with them, except for Nate. Who just looks startled and just like, what are you doing? He, he, look, and he, he just runs off. Yeah, like he tries to play with, like, engage Nate in this. And I don't know, Nate just seems, Nate is not into it. Yeah. But he does seem to have, like, prepared stuff with everyone. Like, yeah, they all it looks seem like he's practiced know. this shit, for sure. <laughs> so then we get the sequence of Roy trying to get to the stadium and he first takes a taxi and then the road is closed. So he tries to run, but his leg is fucked up still. So he has to get a ride from somebody who rides, rides a bike up for one of those uh, like 
rickshaw type mm-hmm, things mm-hmm. and then he gets to the front thinking they'll just let him in and they don't believe that he's Roy Kent so then he has to go buy a ticket I love when he curses and they're like oh it is you, it <laughs> is you. <laughs> and then he walks out and everybody begins to chant he's here he's there he's every fucking where Roy Kent and Keely Roy sees Kent. him and it's just like no shit and Isaac sees him and is like oh my god awesome like isaac's pumped that he is here i was a little worried that maybe isaac wouldn't be too happy about it because it's one thing for him to offer help outside and it's another thing for somebody who used to be team captain to be Mm -hmm. back and be like Mm -hmm. feeling like you're kind of being watched by them but isaac has a very good reaction the person who is not happy about this is nate who looks really hurt yeah in my opinion that he has he has not proven enough of a coach to make this unnecessary yeah the fact that they had to bring in roy means that this is an inadequacy on his part they needed a big dog and he was not going to do that job and i really felt for him because this is another instance of like ted just doing stuff without talking to people Mm -hmm. and not understanding the impression that it's giving and I really don't really I don't really know what would have been better in terms of if bringing Roy back is a mistake in general but considering the way he reacted to Nate putting himself out there as the big dog a conversation was warranted before Mm -hmm. doing this yeah and I am bothered that it doesn't seem to enter his mind at all Mm -hmm. I want to ask you a quick question um so when Roy tries to get into the game, he can't. Mm-hmm. And then he has to go to the will call and ask for a ticket under the name Reba McIntyre. Oh, right. I forgot about that. Uh, I don't, you were asking me like what that's about. Well, I didn't know if you, if you meant, if you remembered that uh, earlier in this season, there's a scene where uh, Ted reminds Keeley that every week he leaves a ticket for Roy under the name of a various country star. Oh, I didn't remember that he says it's like under country stars. I just knew that he well, keeps he, tickets he, for him. He named like one was Shania Twain. Uh, I forget who the other one was, but just like three names. Huh, I don't remember that at all. Okay. So, I guess the question becomes, how does Roy know what the ticket is to ask for? I, I'm i betting that uh, every time Ted has new tickets, he emails him the name of the country star. This just, on, just every week? Just every Monday every week, morning? Just every like, morning? Yeah. <laughs> and Roy always gets the text and is always like, oh, delete. <laughs> and this week he had to go into his trash folder and find it as he was running on his bum <laughs> leg, hobbling around. But yeah, I forgot all about that. So... Yeah, I feel for for Nate this one. This was tough. Yeah. I uh I th- this fundamental lack of believing in yourself is so big an issue. Mm-hmm. And Ted is so not seeing it. And yep. this is why we need a Dr. Sharon around. Hmm. You know, for, for a, a a a person like Ted who I mean he's got the believe sign right up in the the locker room right mm-hmm. he talks about it all the time and yet it seems that he's got the sky right next to him and he doesn't seem to be seeing him for reasons it's a uh, ted's version of believe is really a lot more about like circumstances mm-hmm. it doesn't feel like he's struggled with like the kind of I mean, this is in, this is in your foundations. If you grew up with a, a parent who just made you feel like you could never get it right, it's not gonna. It's gonna be very different. And I don't know what Ted's life was like, but I there's a sense of either he just doesn't understand this sort of like mindset, 
that Nate is living with or he doesn't want to address it because he thinks that like there's a way to just sort of sidestep it. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. Just joke and be positive your way out of it. A little bit. You know, so uh, what do you think, if any kind of fallout we might see as we get towards the end of this, um, our time here with, with uh, Roy coming back to the team now and we see how Nate doesn't seem happy and seems, you know, a little unsure about what his future is. I feel like Nate's going to come down real hard on the new kit guy. Cause it's like mm. the only place he can Poor explore Will. power. Yeah. <laughs> Just out here adding lavender to the towels, <laughs> trying to make everybody stay a little bit better. We haven't seen him in a minute, but yeah, I just feel like the, the thing that you do, if you feel powerless is take that out on people mm. that, are, are the only ones that you have any power over okay. and i don't like to think that about him but we have seen the way he acts with this kid and i'm just like i don't know what else to do with that you know yeah. um I, I guess we'll have to keep our eye on ted too and see if he starts paying attention and look i'm still mad that he doesn't have a conversation with uh What's his face about bringing Jamie back? I was just going to I thought you were talking about this thing and I was just about to go back to like Jamie, but you're mm-hmm. right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. Mm. I'm so excited for this last end of this, uh, the second half of this season. They still have not said when they're dropping season three. They have not. And Are we just been... going to have to like pause in the middle of the other thing we're covering? Maybe. Bring, go back to this? Like. There's like, there's also kind of like all kinds of weird drama going on that I, and I haven't clicked on any articles because I am mm. not here for the negativity, but people, I keep seeing headlines on my Google alerts talking about drama when it's said a Ted Lasso and I am like, delete, uh, don't want to know about it. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> so I have no idea what this, it could be just clickbait head, headlines, but, but they keep showing up for me. Ted, Ted Lasso season three, drama behind the scenes. Thank you. I I would really rather not. I don't want to know anything that you're talking about. And so I don't. (laughs) I was trying to find Owen got me a pack of like stickers to put on your tech that is Ted Lasso themed from. Oh, I I don't know where I put them. I wanted to show them to you, but I can't find them. We have very little time left. So real quick. I want to say hi to the two new patrons for this week. We've got Cobra Cartoon and Selena Vivian. Welcome. Welcome to both of you. Thank you so much for signing up and becoming patrons. It's hugely appreciated. Um, I am really just always delighted to see new names and uh sometimes i'll see old names that are coming back and i'm like oh word hi <laughs> so thank you to everybody who has been supporting the show and uh the discord i don't remember if i mentioned this last week i think i said it on the song of ice and fire one but i added a section in discord for oh. um crafts and it's like a category and i have writing visual arts and crafting on there um i think i just labeled the category creative stuff and uh, I'm trying to learn how to crochet, girl. I tried to do this last night. How'd that go? Ooh, did you, did you do it? Well. <laughs> okay. Oh, boy. It was, right. uh, it, I did a like an event where it was like group watch. And so mm-hmm. it was the video playing from YouTube that was a tutorial. And I was on camera doing it on camera. And I had to stop rewinding that thing like at least 11 <laughs> times, undo my shit, start over at least six <laughs> times. And by the end, like it's supposed to be, I'm, I'm crocheting a square, like a flat two dimensional square, but my shit was three dimensional. So it <laughs> have been. And it had and levels. It had, it had like tur- twisted on itself. Like I caught something wrong and like <laughs> stitched shit in. It was a mess. So I'm going to be trying that again this weekend at some point. <laughs> but I have not given up. I am determined to do this. Uh, but yeah, if anybody feels like joining me for those, I'm probably going to do most of those uh, every other Wednesday. There are the other Wednesdays. I always like I'm out for the day running errands that those are the Wednesdays that I borrow the car. But in between our Wednesdays that I am at home and have the day off. So those are the days I'll probably be like trying to do this again and uh try and make like some events ahead of time if people want to join but i think i'm trying to remember who it was who was in the chat with me now oh my i know alex was there um and was it jackie she was 
watching me and trying to help me and and just so kind and patient watching my fucking fumbling fingers and also was like hey look i'm not trying to tell you how to do your thing but the lady in this youtube video is doing some weird stuff (laughs) and and using terminology i have not heard before so if i were you i would find a different beginner's video because i feel like this might not (laughs) be your problem so much as a her problem and i was like Look, even if that's not true, I I really do appreciate it. It's got to make you feel a little bit better, right? A little bit. Just a little bit. So, um, so yeah, it was Ashley. It was Ashley. Appreciate it. Um, anyway, so, yeah, that's what's going on in that world. And uh, if anybody wants to come chill, we're going to be doing a NaNoWriMo for 2023 in January because doing it in November is stupid. So if you want to get in on that, come over uh, to the Discord. All right. We are out of time. Yeah, we are. Thank you so much to everybody who came to the live. Love having you here. Thanks, guys. And until next time, toodaloo, motherfuckers. Bye, guys. No, my hands won't be tied down. And I will not lay them down. Because I can finally see the truth. So simple, but so. Ocean's depths were out of reach for me and you. If you're coming up for air, breathing in, you know I'll be there when you first begin. And when everybody's telling us we have no time, we'll prove them wrong. That was an unspoiled network podcast. Yeah.